Traffic in America is an extremely interesting topic. The way cities were planned out over the last century can have direct effect on how it runs current day. You can permanently ruin your city just by poorly planning it in the early 1900s. And as well as this, the geography of a city also affects how the traffic runs current day, something the city itself has much less control over. Though places like Indianapolis or Oklahoma City aren't going to have to deal with as many geographical challenges, places like San Francisco or Pittsburgh are going to have to work around the land their city was built on. And sometimes cities were just set up for disaster traffic-wise, with nothing they can really do about it. So today I wanted to talk about that, going through some cities I think are affected by this and how it has changed the way things are developed there. Really quick before the video starts though, I wanted to ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. I make geography content just like this every single week, so please help me out by simply clicking the red button below. Thank you so much. So in the same way that cities are affected by being in a hilly region, the opposite's also true. Places like Indianapolis or Houston can really expand any way they want. This makes the cities more circular, since the only real place affecting the expansion is the downtown, or the core of the metropolitan area. This results in a very basic expansion path. You have the downtown, usually with a beltway around it, or something like that, and then farther out, another beltway. Some cities even have three or four beltways, depending on how big you get. A lot of the time, one direction will start expanding faster than the other directions. In somewhere like Dallas-Fort Worth, that would be to the north, while in Kansas City, that would be to the south. Every city is unique in expansion, but there's a simple layout that you can expect to see in most flat central cities. Anyways, now let's get into the more juicy stuff and talk about some cities that have distinct features affecting their expansion and in turn affecting traffic. So first we have Madison, Wisconsin, which is not exactly what you may be expecting in this video, but I think it's a really interesting one. So if you don't know Madison, basically it's located on two lakes, Lake Mendota and Lake Monona. The entire city is built around and according to these two lakes. The downtown's located on the isthmus between the two, which may seem like a good idea when you're picking a capital in the 1800s, but now it has resulted in a lot of major problems. First off, all the traffic is basically being pushed into an area that just isn't meant to hold that amount. The downtown area is in such a thin region between the two lakes, and with all the traffic pushing into this small area, it's a recipe for disaster. Zooming in more to the capital region here, it gets down to as little as six roads going through, and there's basically only one option if you want to completely go around the capitol building that being US-151, which requires you going through this messy intersection at Blair Street and Washington Avenue. Moving out of the downtown, the other main problem is the south part of the Beltline. This is basically the only way to get around the city, so most of the commuters are going to be there. Because if you want to get from one side of the city to the other, your only options are the Beltline or the downtown, and absolutely nobody wants to willingly go through the downtown. So the Beltway ends up getting pretty much all of the city's traffic. The next city I wanted to talk about is Pittsburgh, being a little bit bigger now. And this one's a bit more obvious. So basically, Pittsburgh was built right at the merging point of the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers, which becomes the Ohio River. Now, most big cities will have freeways going around the downtown, and Pittsburgh has tried their hardest to do this, but it's incredibly difficult because of how the city's laid out. Now, I'm seeing three really bad points in the city for traffic. So first, there's the loop around the downtown. I've been here before, so I know these freeways are absolutely chaotic, though pretty much anyone can tell you that without going there. Another problem is the tunnels under the bluffs to the south of the city. There are two major tunnels, the Fort Pitt and Liberty Tunnels. Now, when coming into the city from the south, those are basically your only two options, which makes for a sort of traffic pinch. Now, with this, I also think I-376 is another important thing to mention, because it seems to be the main interstate going through the city east-west, so most of the traffic ends up on the route. This makes for bad traffic basically from one side of the city limits all the way to the other, especially where it's just two lanes on either side to the east of the downtown, which is only a thing because of the terrain there, which makes it virtually impossible to widen. Next up, we have Chattanooga, Tennessee, struggling from being built into the Appalachian Mountains a little too heavily. Now, this one doesn't require as much explanation, so I won't talk about it as much, but looking at the traffic map of the city, there's pretty clearly one major problem here. I-24. Now, there's an obvious reason for this with the geography of Chattanooga. There's mountains to the west. Pretty large ones at that. I mean, just crossing the mountains at all is difficult, with there only being six actual routes going through in the southern 50-mile stretch of Tennessee. Now, with this coming into the city from the west, there's only one actual route, and that's I-24. This causes all the passing traffic onto the road, and again makes a sort of geographic pinch for the city. 
Next up, we have a more obvious one that felt like it needed to be mentioned, which is New York City. Now, this one is a little different because there's simply too much to talk about. The city is obviously the biggest in the country, and there's so much going on with the traffic and the geographic location, I simply can't go through it all. So let's start by saying the way New York has so many islands is definitely a main reason for the problems. Manhattan is the most central point of the city, and it just really isn't that big of an island, so it makes it incredibly difficult to withstand the amount of traffic it sees. The main problem I see is that the Hudson River is actually really, really wide. So there can't be a ton of bridges or tunnels crossing it. There's the Holland and Lincoln Tunnel, as well as the George Washington Bridge at the north end of the island. Those are the only connections between Manhattan and New Jersey. This turns into some exceptionally busy crossings. In fact, the George Washington Bridge is the busiest of any bridge in America. Other than this, the city really just can't have freeways anywhere because there are simply too many cars, which makes for constant traffic in the city. Next up, we have San Francisco, as well as the Bay Area as a whole. Now, for this one, it obviously just comes from the massive bay mixing with the mountainous landscape. There simply isn't enough room there. Within the city lines of San Francisco, you basically see too much demand and not enough room. It's one of the densest cities in the country. San Francisco has been forced to build upwards instead of outwards, which absolutely never bodes well for traffic. It's probably for the best that San Francisco had freeway revolts and never ended up building an extensive freeway system around the city. Because I know with the way things are going, it would just have made things worse. If I had to highlight one spot I think was a particular problem, it would be obviously the Bay Bridge. Because it's quite literally the only direct connection between San Francisco and Oakland, two really big cities. There's just so much traffic taking the bridge, no matter how much you upgrade it, there is nothing you can do at this point. Next up we have Salt Lake City, one that's become significantly worse in recent years as it's grown. The main problem with this one is its thin location, tucked between large mountains and the Great Salt Lake or Utah Lake. Now the major problem with this is pretty much all the traffic is going north to south. And because there's so little room, you have one route that absolutely everybody takes, I-15. At certain points it's so bad there's literally like two roads that you could even possibly take, like the Ogden Corridor for example, where the lands between the mountains and the lake are so small, I-15 is basically the only connection between the north part of the metro and the central part. Same thing on the other end, where there's again only one major route connecting Salt Lake City to the Provo area, that being I-15. Basically the whole metro commutes using this road, and if you've learned anything from this video so far, it's that that is going to be a recipe for a disaster. Next up we have Seattle, which is another one that struggles from this kind of problem where there just isn't enough room for the central city. Now even those in a mountainous region, this doesn't severely affect the traffic. What does affect the traffic is that Seattle is located on an isthmus, probably the worst possible geographical feature for a city. Now in the downtown, the isthmus is about 2.5 miles wide, which results in just one major freeway that's going to go through the whole area, and that's I-5. So I-5 is going to be the main choke point since it runs past the downtown on the east side and is really the only freeway that passes through the entire isthmus. Now there is State Route 99 which tunnels straight under the downtown, which is technically another option, but that does just end up turning into a surface road north of the downtown, so it can't really count. Next we move to our final two cities, both of which are going to be in Florida. Now Florida has a lot of really interesting geographical features. You have to deal with expansive lakes, bays, and swamps throughout the state. So starting with Tampa, the bay is going to come more into play. Now the more specific area that I feel struggles with this is Pinellas County and the St. Petersburg area. So this is a county of almost 1 million people, which has basically maxed out its expansion. Now the St. Petersburg area is not easy to get to. If you're a sports fan, you may know about this because of the controversy regarding Tropicana Field, which is a stadium home to the Tampa Bay baseball team, and yet it was placed in one of the locations hardest to get to out of the whole metro. Now the old Tampa Bay has three bridges crossing it, with the Tampa Bay having just one bridge connecting Pinellas County to the Bradenton, Sarasota area. Basically what I'm trying to convey here is that the Pinellas Peninsula is just really difficult to get to, and this affects the overall traffic patterns in the area. Finally, we have beautiful Miami, which is a lot easier to describe than Tampa, because it has one pretty major problem that's clear to see when looking at it from a map. I'll show you a picture on screen and give you a moment to see if you can guess what's wrong with this city. Now you may have guessed it, but it's the massive, expansive swamp to the west, the Everglades. The entire metro is required to be this thin, long area tucked between the hurricane-infested waters of the Atlantic and the completely uninhabitable Everglades. So the city, and at least the southern part of the metro, is basically out of room fully. 
forcing the already built up area to get more built up and incredibly chaotic. And this is just not good for roads. There's only so many freeways and boulevards you can build before you're really just out of room. There's too many cars going north-south and not enough roads to hold them. It's pretty simple. So in conclusion, I think what you should have gotten from this video is that when a city doesn't have enough room to evenly expand and distribute the traffic, it ends up having choke points where every car pretty much has to go, and this results in bad traffic for the cities. There are a lot more places that could be talked about, like New Orleans, Los Angeles, both Charleston's, or Asheville, and maybe I'll get to those some other time, but these are the cities I think are most majorly affected by geography when talking about traffic. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Carport, Schneider Schwine, Florida Jake, Philip Gertz, Somnam Woods, Big Pasty, Stormy Knight, Nikita Murninoff, KMS162, Haystack, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Jake Holloway, JL, Jeremy Crone, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryson. Thank you all, I genuinely appreciate it so much. If you want to become a member, the join button is down below as well as in the description. All of this money goes straight into my college savings so you know I'm not spending it on anything dumb. This is really just helping me as a person and my future. So if you appreciate the content, that's this is the easiest way to support the channel. Thank you.